Hi there, it's Travis here from Hyde Motor Works. Uh, I'm the designer of the OT M10 bracket system for the M65 Eaton supercharger to mount onto the M10 motors, uh, motors which stretch back from as far back as the mid 60s through to 1986, uh, placed into E21s, 2002s, and also the E30s, um, amongst others. Um, so this kit, uh, what's in the kit is uh, the bracket system that obviously holds the M65 supercharger onto the side of the M10. Um, it's a, a large bracket that also houses the M54 alternator uh, off an E46 uh, BMW. Um, there's a new pulley, a single groove pulley that comes with this uh, kit to put onto that E46 alternator. Uh, just to upgrade the uh, whole electrical system there by using that. This kit is exclusively available through Hyde Motorworks. And the first prototype I have put onto my car um, with the help from Full Noise Performance in Heatherbrae near Newcastle, New South Wales. Um, we have done quite a few upgrades to, um, to get the M65 pairing like a kitten. So obviously the bracket kit allows you to mount the Eaton M65 supercharger onto your M10. Uh, this supercharger is uh, was commonly found in the C180s, C200s and C220s uh, from the early 2000s era up to about 2009. Um, you should be able to find some of these in scrapyards or online for a reasonably good price. So the kit also comes with a new crank pulley uh, which is a combination pulley of a six rib serpentine style belt uh, pulley on the outside of the pulley itself and on the inside there is a, an 11A size V-belt which runs the, uh, the alternator and also to the water pump of the M10. There's also a tensioning system which attaches to the, the front plate uh, which allows you to tension the Built on the supercharger. You use your cogged original bracket from your M10 engine to uh, mount onto the front plate and use that as a um, as part of the tensioning system for the new alternator. Now the design of this system, I wanted the supercharger to be really prominent in the engine bay. Um, it's set at a 30 degree angle, which is the exact opposite uh, as it sits of the actual um, head itself of the M10 engine and the way that the engine is positioned in the engine bay. Uh, which is 30 degrees also, but in the opposite direction. I think the way that it's, it's sitting inside the engine bay looks really good. Um, it also hides all the pipe work which is underneath. So with Full Noise Performance and I, we decided that we would put a 24 to 1 um, crank trigger wheel onto, we mounted that onto the, um, uh, the combination pulley, um, the six rib and the V-belt. There's a space in between which has got a block facing of about 10 mils where you can screw one in uh, and attach that there. Um, also to crank uh, trigger mechanism that went with that. We also use an air temp sensor to send information to the uh, new ECU. So we've used a, a programmable ECU, which is the Link Monsoon G4X. Uh, we also added a wideband Lambda O2 kit. And the map sensor, there's a map sensor um, built into uh, a little port on the ECU, which we took reference from the intake plenum. We also added a water temp sen sensor um, in the original position where the water temp sensor and the water temp senders are yeah, at the, um, the three-way um, takeoff point uh, just near where the water pump is. Uh, there's also a knock sensor. We decided we'd put one of these in just for added protection. And at the very end, we put in a boost control valve uh, as well as a bypass valve. It's a turbo smart bypass valve. So the Turbo Smart Bypass Valve uh, we used as that's a mechanical device um, with a spring and a plunger and a reference point to vacuum from the intake plenum. Um, we also added a boost control valve to take any confusion out of um, the mechanisation of that. Um, so if it didn't sense for whatever reason that it needed to open up 
uh, as soon as you take your foot off the throttle, the electronic um, boost control valve would take over and do it for us. So um, quite a worthwhile investment to have. Two things that I also wanted to do with this build, which you don't necessarily have to, but I've just brought it into the 21st century, you could say, is um, I've actually added a Bosch 60mm um, throttle body, uh, an electronic one, a drive-by-wire one, uh, and that sits on the original position of where the electronic Bosch bypass valve goes on the M65 supercharger. Um, so the, that's on the front port of the rear of the, the whole assembly. So at the very rear of that, there's another intake port. Um, we've actually used that as the bypass port. So we've, in effect, we've reversed those two ports. Um, having the throttle body virtually on the supercharger rather than closer to the intake, um, air intake uh, filter. Um, we found that this reduces a bit of noise as well. Um, noise is great, it's a great sound. We love the supercharger wine, but this has probably reduced that a little bit. Um, and naturally we didn't use the silencer that comes with the M65 Eaton, which is a, a massive piece of kit which we omitted. Um, you still get that lovely wine, but uh, it's not annoyingly loud. and. Uh, it negates the need to have a dummy throttle body or a second throttle body. Uh, to make it a little bit more uh, user friendly as well with programming the ECU, um, we've also used an E46 electronic uh, throttle pedal or accelerator pedal, sorry. Um, so we replaced the original BMW E30 um, pedal with an electronic one. Um, worked out to be about $150 to do and a little bit of extra money to put it in. Um, but it's a, it's a massive um, bonus having that. You can um, dial in the duty that you want, how much press you get out of the accelerator. You can, um, uh, you can translate that to um, wide open throttle or par partial throttle. Um, yeah, it's just a, a really good thing to have. So those are all the goodies that, um, that I've put onto my engine to make it run really, really well, uh, really, really bomb proof, really smooth. Now for the details, um, the first dyno run we did when things were on stock, um, before anything was changed, um, we had 82 horsepower at the rear wheels. Um, so 82 rear wheel horsepower. Um, the first tune that we did do uh, after putting on the supercharger, um, that was basically getting the fueling correct. Um, we worried about timing after that run. We got it up to 122 rear wheel horsepower. So setting up the base map with the M65 on the M10, um, a, a few degrees advanced. Um, we increased that up to five degrees advanced um, after we had the fueling correct. So at about that 122 mark, 122 rear wheel horsepower mark, things maxed out a bit. So what we found was the boost pressure now that was in there, uh, in the intake plenum was pushing against the fuel rail pressure and reducing the fuel rail. So we were leaning out. Um, what we did to, um, to combat that was put in a fuel pressure regulator, um, just a standard rising rate one, which now fairly common, um, and that gave us about 30% extra available fuel pressure in the rail. Now bearing in mind this is using still the stock 14.5 pounds per hour or the 152cc injectors, um, the original injectors that most M10s came out of the factory with. Um, and without the need to add higher value injectors, also a fuel pump um, and a better or stronger fuel pressure regulator. Um, yeah, what we found was that we got up to 147 rear wheel horsepower um, at 5.5 psi. So this build also too, we didn't swap the injectors, we've used the same uh, original stock 14.5 pound per hour or the 152cc injectors that came with the engine. Um, I think if we went to a smaller size pulley on the M65 supercharger, that would be the point where we would need to increase um, up to perhaps 19 pounds per hour. Um, injectors, Bosch EV1 injectors, but in this case we've just maintained our, our original 14.5s which are 152cc. 
Uh, in doing this, we don't need to put a new fuel pump in underneath the car. Um, we don't need anything higher than the rating of the fuel pressure regulator that we've got, so everything's working well. Um, we're within our duty cycles of the fuel pressure delivery. Um, so the final result that we did get after those tweaks, we got 147 rear wheel horsepower at 5.5 PSI from the M65. Uh, it was a wonderful result. It just seems that that M65 supercharger is just perfectly matched to the M10. Um, everything's safe, uh, especially on my build with the computer controlling everything. Um, the knock sensor's there to reduce any harm. Um, there's adequate fuel to cool things and provide a wetter mix if need be. Okay, so in summary, what we got 82 horsepower at the rear wheels, stock. Um, with a complete tune and a perfect tune, we've lifted it up um, 79% up to 147 horsepower at the rear wheels. Um, also too, we've gained 48% in torque, which is perfect all across the rev range. So just uh, bringing to light, if you do want to go even higher than 5.5 PSI, what you'd need to do is build your internals uh, of your engine, make them a little bit stronger. Um, I'm thinking perhaps you would easily gain up to close to 200 horsepower. Um, but by doing this, you'd also need to reduce the size of your pulley. The stock pulley on the M65 is 71 mils. Uh, I believe there are some that are 59 or 60 mils um, and that would gain um, on 5.5 um, that would gain you I think up to about 7 to 8 psi. I've also used an intercooler with this build off of Peugeot 208. Um, it's a small same side in and out intercooler um, that fits perfectly within the MTEC 2 bumper bar. I'm sure not all of you have got MTEC 2 bumper bars, but um, it will fit neatly underneath. So for further information on this new kit, which is called the OT M10 Supercharger Kit uh, for the Eaton M65 Supercharger on the M10 engines, go to www.hydemotorworks.com. Uh, they'll answer any questions that you may have, help you through the process, um, I'll be here for backup if need be with um, our technical help. Um, look up social media information on Hyde Motorworks as well. They've got um, an awesome amount of uh, BMWs especially, but other cars that they've supercharged and they have supercharger kits for. So have a supercharged day everyone.